Hey guys, welcome back to Care Tutoring. My name is TL and this is going to be the conclusion to my series on College Panda SAT Essential Math Questions. This is going to cover the last four questions of the 12 questions set. And as always, I've left a link in the description below. So if you want to do these questions first and come back to this video to check your work, then feel free to do so. Also, I've left a link in the description for Care Tutoring. So if you're interested in receiving free tutoring for SAT, ACT, AP, IB, A-levels, and general high school topics, then feel free to sign up using the link in the description and we'll check your eligibility. So without further ado, let's begin. So the first question is going to involve some inequalities and this is the first restriction that we get. So we have to keep that in mind. And second, we have the second expression that is equal to or greater than or equal to nine. And they're asking us to find the least possible value of b. So the first thing we do is we have to set the second inequality equal to 9, just because that's going to be the least possible value of the second expression. So let's do that now. a plus b squared minus a minus b squared is equal to 9. Now what we want to do is FOIL this. So whenever we have uh, some algebraic expression squared, we just write it out twice and distribute. So a plus b, a plus b, and then we distribute, so multiply the first term and the first term, so a squared, and then the second term, but I'll just simplify it. So it's going to be 2ab plus b squared, and then we do the same thing for the other side. So um, it's going to be minus this entire term, which is going to be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So one thing we do now is we distribute a negative um, since we're subtracting. So we can actually cross out these and these, these terms, um, because we're going to be subtracting. So now one thing we're left with is this negative and this subtraction and a negative. So that turns into addition. So cross that out. And then we also turn this to addition. And now we're left with 4ab is equal to 9. And let's separate the AB by itself. So AB is equal to 9 over 4. And uh, one thing that uh, they tell us in the beginning of the problem is that the least value of B is when B is equal to A. So let's just make A equal to B. So B squared, or B times B, is equal to 9 over 4. And you just take the square root of both sides. So B is equal to the rad 9 over rad 4. B is equal to 3 over 2. And that's going to be our final answer. Next is going to involve some trigonometry. Um, this is one specific property that involves sine and cosine. Since they're co-functions of each other, um, we should know that sine of x is equal to cosine 90 minus x. So if these are the same, then uh, if sine of a is equal to cosine of b, then we already know that this expression and this expression must add up to 90. So let's do that now. So then we add those two together and we set them equal to 90. Uh, combine like terms. So we have 3x is equal to 60, uh, 3x plus 66 is equal to 90. 3x is equal to 24. x is equal to 8. And that's going to be our final answer. I'll also leave a link in the description for properties regarding this, um, so you can watch a video on that also. The function f above represents the, total, the current total population of sand sharks off the coast of Greenland two years after 1980. To the nearest year, how many years did it, or will it take for the population to be 10 times larger than it was in 1980? So this is going to be an exponential function, and if you remember, exponential functions are going to be uh, a, b to the x power, or let's just separate the a and the b, so a, b to the x. So in this case, what we have is a as the initial value, and that's going to be 800. So in order for the population to be 10 times larger, what we need to do is set this entire function equal to 8,000, um, just because 800 is the initial value, so we just multiply by 10. So 8,000 is equal to 800 times 1,000 t to 27. So now let's divide that, and then we get 10 is equal to 10,000 t over 27. 
And then we can also rewrite 1000 as 10 to the third power. So let's just do that. Um, 10 is equal to 10, 3t, 27. And now we should just simplify this fraction. T, 10 is equal to 10, t over 9. And what value of t is going to give us 10? That's just going to be 9. And that's going to be our final answer. Okay, so this last question is going to deal with some concentration stuff. So if we have 200 milliliters of 55% solution, and that's what we're trying to get, um, and we only have x milliliters of 40% solution and y milliliters of 60% solution, what is the value of x? So let's represent this using a system of equations. First, what we're going to do is we're going to write a system of equations for the total amount of volume. So x plus y must equal 200, because that's what we are trying to get in terms of volume. And next, we're going to look at concentration. So it gives us that x milliliters of a 40% solution and y milliliters of a 60% solution. So let's just write this as 0.4x times 0.6y is equal to 200 times the 55%. So now we could plug this into the calculator or we could uh, get x for itself and then plug it back in here. I'm just going to plug it into the calculator and I'll show you multiple ways of doing so. So we can use the system equation solver, x plus y equals 200, and 0.4x plus 0.6y equals 200 times 0.55. And we get that x is 50 and y is 150. So x is going to be 50 milliliters, y is equal to 150 milliliters. And that's going to be our answer because that's what we're looking for, x. We could also graph this, so if I were to open a new page. But first we have to uh, obviously rewrite this in terms of y. So y is equal to 200 minus x. Okay, there's a first function and our second function is going to be 0.6y is equal to 200 times 0.55 minus 0.4x and we just divide everything by 0.6. 200 times 0.55 minus 0.4x over 0.6, everything over 0.6. So let's write this into the calculator as well. Fraction 200 times 0.55 and then we have minus 0.4x over 0.6. So now let's zoom a bit and zoom out. And then we look for intersection points and we get that x is going to be 50. Okay, lastly, I want to go over how to do this algebraically. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for one variable. So let's say we're going to solve for x. So x is going to be 200 minus y. And then we just plug it in. So 0.4 times 200 minus y plus 0.6y is equal to 200 times 0.55. And then we just multiply this using the calculator also. So we're going to have 0.4y, negative 0.4y plus 0.6y, that's going to give us 0.2y, and 0.4 times 200, 80. So that 80 equal to 200 times 0.55, 110. And if we separate with y, then we're going to have 0.2y is equal to 30, y is equal to 150, and then we just do 200 minus 150. In this, uh, in this other one, you could also solve for y instead, so that you just solve for x directly, um, but both ways work. So if you guys have any more questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Also, check out Care Tutoring in the description below, and have a nice day.